Hey guys, so I do enjoy Alpha Investments videos and lately he seems very concerned. You can tell from his face and of course he might have to make a video saying that he's not concerned for his Patreons. But uh, overall, as someone who used to really be into buying Magic cards, um, now I buy collections at buy list and that's the only thing I'm buying. I don't I have a contract with Walmart, but Elsa makes me far more money than Magic the Gathering could ever. I could have Pokemon and Elsa, they make 10 times as much money as Magic the Gathering. The margins are just not there, and the demand for Magic cards is declining no matter what someone tells you. The collector's case edition, which is available in every single gift box, isn't that rare. You can go to Target right now, and they're selling individual packs, so... Like I said, if you can find in Target, Walmart, GameStop, Barnes & Nobles, then how rare and collectible can the item actually be if it's in every single Walmart and Target in the U.S. or if it's in every single gift box. So um, I'm going to talk about the danger that Rudy alluded to, and it's a danger that I've always thought would become a reality sooner than later. So of course, I prepared myself for said danger, and that was Wizard of the Coast would sell direct-to-consumer singles. So they have been doing this for some time. You just haven't noticed uh, the deluxe edition with the box topper of Garouk was them selling singles. Yes, you had to buy all this other junk, but you were guaranteed this one card that at the time was very valuable. Today, Garouk is no good. I mean, yeah. Just like I said, Throne of the Eldarin, if you want to know what's going to happen to these collector's cards after rotation, take a look at Oko. His price is down 70, 60, 70% already. His like collector's edition version, the box top, the most expensive version of Oko, because he can still be played in Pioneer and Modern, he just can't be played in Standard. So that's who every single one of these cards after rotation, they should plummet at least 70, 80, 90% of the card price should be just decimated because no one's going to play these. Yeah, the card looks good, but no one wants the card because it's not playable in Modern or Pioneer. Might be playable in ED8s, but that's a very small subset of a standard set. So I knew this would happen, and I'm very glad that I no longer deal with Magic cards with uh, Walmart. And they asked me, are you sure? And I said, yeah, just send me more Pokemon. Send me, send me some more Frozen 2. Uh, even Marvel, I'm getting into Disney movies again, which not a D Disney DVDs, not great margins, but uh, they do sell. And there are very good gifts to give away during the holidays to um, to basically anybody. Anybody and everybody is going to take a Marvel movie, right, during the holiday. It's an easy gift. So Magic Cards, when it comes down to it, they, they are selling Bitter Blossom. I know that there is a single, I mean, there's two tokens, right? But they looked at the secondary market to figure out the prices. So that's why the Goblins, there's five of them because these there's not a single goblin among these five that is worth what a bit of blossom is worth. And the bit of blossom is worth right now $30, $40. They're going to charge $40 for this premium version, which might then sell for like $45 or something like that. So they are selling single cards. I mean, bit of blossom is a single card. They are selling to the consumers directly. And you order online. There is no local game store. Um... DNA Comics, which was my local game store for many years, four years, and they did a lot of magic. They understood this even before I knew. Uh, the owner decided not to do magic anymore because it just wasn't going to make him money. And that was true. And here's, here's the key. Like, you do have to understand one basic principle of Magic the Gathering. The margins are not in your favor. Uh, the margins are never, ever in your favor. Um, what I mean that, I mean, if you buy a box, so let me take you through the margins of an Elsa figure, okay? MSRP for Elsa is $20. I need to pay $12 for this Elsa figure. Resale value, I can either sell it for $20 or Elsa will go up and I can sell it for $30 on Amazon because the price of this doll has increased 
beyond MSRP, just like Magic cards sometimes do. My margin at the worst case scenario is $8 on something I paid $12 for. So it's 40%. When you, and I have not seen any products with margins less than 40% outside of Marvel movies. But then again, that's Marvel, right? Marvel and Disney movies. Uh, some products have margins like TY beanies have margins of 55%, meaning that I buy the, I sell the beanie for $6. I buy the beanie for $3.50, something like that, or $3. Um, but the majority of my margins are above 40 or at least 40% or above. When it comes to a magic booster box that you buy for $82 from distribution, and if you're lucky, you can sell for $100. If you are lucky, um, of course, you know, maybe you're not lucky. And, and you never want to have dead inventory. Dead inventory is the worst, absolute worst thing that can happen to you. Um, there's something where I will just say that uh, when it comes down to it, you don't want to be the dude holding 100 cases of Dragon Maze, right? So your cash flow, and you're always in this cycle, and you're always in this cycle. So I thought that Wizard of Coast should always be able to sell single cards to, or in this case, like a play set of, so not they're, they're not just selling single cards, they're also selling play set of cards like Serum Visions. They're selling um, cards that you want to buy a play set. So if you like this artwork, Blood Gas is a very valuable card. Life from the Loam is a great card to buy. And Fug is the best, I mean, Golgari Trail got banned, or you're, they're selling land. So you want some snow cover lands? Here you go. And this is very smart, but this will put a lot of local businesses out of local magic stores out of business. So like Rudy said, Rudy always knew, but even if you know, you don't always. So even if you know this is coming, you don't oh you're, you're still surprised they came so fast, right? And I know Rudy made videos a long time ago about, oh, don't open a magic store. Don't open a magic store. Here are the 10 reasons not to open a magic store and so on. But yeah, it still hits you like a ton of bricks when your competitor is not the magic store next to you. Your competitor is Wizards of the Coast. They're directly competing by selling singles. You know what makes the most money? The boxes don't make any money as a percentage, right? So remember, I said 40% is, that's the target. When you sell, when you buy a box for eighty-two, you sell it for a hundred, you make eighteen dollars. That is less than twenty-five percent margin. Plus, you have overhead. Plus, you have a lot of other expenses that you have to deal with as a retail store. So you need that extra margin. That fifteen percent might not seem like a lot to you, but that's fifteen percent of pure profit, and it's less of a risk. So it is easier for me to buy a bunch of Elsa's and sell them because I know they can sell than for me to buy the new Magic set, which I don't know if it can sell or not. There is a big risk that I'm investing all this money. That's why Warhammer is a terrible investment for a store because those once your customer buys a kit, they're done. And now they're going to take space in your store to play Warhammer. I mean, the average Warhammer player outside of one or two big purchases a year it doesn't really and i know people say what about snacks oh snacks like i'm here to tell you that's dumb like think about it for a moment if you go to fnm how many snacks are people buying the answer is not enough right where your money is coming from is you can buy cheap because you're a store and when you know people come to you like for me it's very simple just buy go on tcg player Put your cards with the right condition and hopefully the right, uh, you know, language, which is a problem for me recently. And on the, the app, click the buy list button and it will, the app will pick the best buy list option for you. And then I'll be able to look at it and say, yep, here's the money in cash and thank you. Good for me. So buying singles and selling singles is how most people make money as a magic store. You don't make money from selling boxes. I can tell you the margins are not there. Singles have margins typical from buy list depends on the single, but typically 40% or better. 
Um, obviously, dual lands have much smaller gaps because you make more money and they're very liquid and they're in high. It depends on the card, of course. So I think Rudy's a little worried. Uh, and I would be too. If I was a local game store and my profits were mainly determined on selling singles, I would be very concerned at this moment in time because they just took away the thing that I make the most margins. And trust me, they will make more of these secret layers. There will be a millions of these cards. Millions. Because why would they not? You want Force of Will? Okay, give me $100. Here's a Force of Will with a cartoon on it. Here you go. I love it. <laughs> Hi, guys.